Hello, welcome to the channel Why Stories. Enjoy watching. Towards evening, Antonio got a terrible headache. He had spent the day in numerous meetings, signed important papers, and prepared for crucial negotiations scheduled for the end of the week. Antonio was so exhausted that he didn't bother turning on the music in the car. On his way home, he decided to enjoy the silence. It's actually nice, Antonio remarked. I should have these kind of relaxing days periodically. Upon arriving home, he called out to the housekeeper from the doorway. Kate, good evening. Do we have any painkillers? Good evening. You're a bit late today. I'll look for the pills right now. What's wrong? Another migraine? Oh, you shouldn't be suffering from that so early. You're only 33 years old, the woman said with disappointment. Kate had been taking care of the cleanliness in Antonio's house for two years now. She was 10 years older than the homeowner, and they had developed friendly, if not entirely close, relations. Despite their friendliness, they always maintained a certain distance and addressed each other formally. Kate came to Antonio's apartment three times a week. She cleaned the floors, vacuumed, dusted, did laundry, and ironed clothes. In general, she fulfilled the role of a proper housewife. Antonio didn't have a real wife, although a few years ago, it almost led to a wedding. At the age of 25, Antonio met Veronica, a green-eyed blonde with incredibly long legs and a captivating smile. Antonio had just started working for the company, of which he was now the CEO. He was a talented and promising specialist, but young and lacking sufficient experience. Veronica joined the company as a secretary, and given her credentials, it's no surprise that she was hired. Afterward, there was fierce competition in the department for the heart of this beauty. Veronica simply condescendingly fluttered her long eyelashes and observed which of her suitors would prove to be more cunning. Initially, the deputy head of the department, 45-year-old Senor Mender, was the favored one. He was the most respectable and financially stable. He courted the girl, showered her with expensive gifts, and even managed to arrange a couple of dates. However, when Veronica found out that he had a wife and two children, she immediately rejected him. Despite the classic assurances of a man in such situations that he no longer loved his wife and was about to divorce her, Veronica didn't believe him. She had already had a bitter experience with similar relationships where every word of the man turned out to be a lie. After Senor Mender, the palm of victory was handed over to the young son of the company's main shareholder, Tono. He was the same age as Veronica, just out of university. He was charming, cheerful, and active, but had a strong dislike for work and tried to avoid his duties whenever possible. His financial well-being wasn't affected since his rich father turned a blind eye to his son's negligence, paying him an undeservedly high salary. Promotion was on the horizon. Tono, like Senor Mender, began showering Veronica with expensive gifts, but she managed to put a stop to these attempts to win her heart in time. She understood that with such an infantile man, one could only feel secure when there was an influential father nearby. However, if something happened to him, it would be impossible to rely on the guy for anything. Veronica possessed not only beauty but also life wisdom, despite not standing out in intellect. In his turn, Antonio finally got his chance. He was young but not inexperienced, handsome, unmarried, building his career based on his intelligence rather than parents' connections. His future was clearly bright, and it was impossible to miss. His gifts for Veronica were more modest than those of his predecessors, which didn't bother her in the least. She saw potential in this man and knew she could rely on him for everything. Furthermore, his loving gaze. No one had ever looked at her like that before. Typically, the eyes of men revealed only ordinary lust, but Antonio looked at her as if she were a goddess. His gaze held tenderness, passion, and respect in equal measure. Without much thought, Veronica surrendered, and she and Antonio became a couple. This drew the anger of male colleagues and envious glances from women. However, the young couple was so happy that they didn't even notice. They held hands, laughed a lot, went out, and made plans for the future. 
In these plans, they saw themselves as a strong family with two twins, a corgi named Button, and a big house. But they needed to start with at least an apartment. Antonio didn't have his own place, and he knew it was time to make an important purchase. Antonio grew up in a simple family. He was raised by a single mother, a librarian, as his father had passed away when Antonio was eight years old. After finishing school, he left his hometown in the Urals for Moscow and achieved everything on his own. He dreamed not only of standing on his own two feet, but also of helping his mother. But first, he needed to have a place of his own where he could bring Veronica. Antonio took out a mortgage and bought a two-bedroom apartment with the future in mind, including a family and a child. It was more expensive than a one-bedroom, but Antonio had big plans for the future, and he didn't want to deviate from them. The apartment was in a building under construction, which was supposed to be completed in a year. During this time, Antonio suggested that his fiancée live with him in a rental apartment. She agreed, although it was clear that she wasn't thrilled. To make her more comfortable, Antonio started working twice as hard and diligently. First, to quickly earn money for the apartment and pay off the mortgage as soon as possible. Second, to climb the career ladder and no longer experience financial difficulties. Antonio was a programmer, and his company specialized in cutting-edge technology and modern equipment. The field was promising and lucrative, requiring smart individuals, so Antonio, as planned, quickly built his career. However, it was an exhausting process. He often took on overtime, came home late at night, went on business trips to other cities, and worked on weekends. Veronica didn't like this. Honey, but I'm trying to provide for us. Can't you understand? It won't be like this forever. As soon as I get on my feet, I'll have the opportunity to work less and spend more time with you and the children I hope you'll give me. But we need to prepare a nest for them, agree? Antonio would ask his beloved, I agree, the girl sighed sadly, seeing him off to work on a Saturday. The young couple spent less and less time together and saw each other less frequently. Not long before the apartment was due to be completed, Veronica announced that she was quitting her job. She was offered a more interesting position at another company, and she decided to accept it. Honey, why do you need this? Stay, and we'll be together all the time. We'll have lunch together, commute to and from work together, Antonio tried to persuade her. Well, it's not like we're doing that right now, Veronica said. You leave for work earlier than me, come home later, and as for lunches. I don't even know if you're eating anything or busy scheduled leaves no time for meals. Sweetie, just hold on there a little longer. The apartment will be rented out soon, and they'll promote me soon. I've already talked to management about it, and then I won't have to bend over backward to get what I want, Antonio said, but Veronica just shrugged and walked into another room. A month later, the apartment was indeed rented out. Antonio and Veronica were looking forward to their new home. The young man had long ago decided that he would propose to his beloved when he had his own place. And that moment finally arrived. He bought an expensive diamond ring with his last pennies and got down on one knee in their new home on the very first evening. Darling, beloved Veronica, he said with a trembling voice, looking directly into her eyes. I love you very much, and I want you to be my wife. The first important step toward building a family I've taken, I bought this apartment. Of course, there's still a lot of work ahead. We need to furnish the place. But that's all trivial. We can handle it. The main thing is that we'll be together. I promise to be a faithful and dependable husband to surround you with love and care. Will you marry me? Veronica unexpectedly hesitated. She shifted from foot to foot and avoided eye contact. Well, what are you doing? Antonio, get up, she said. Antonio was surprised. Why? Well, it's all a bit old-fashioned and, in general, unnecessary, Veronica continued to hesitate. Okay, as you wish, Antonio replied, getting up from his knee. So, are you agreeing? After a pause, Veronica reluctantly said, Well, yes. I'm very happy, but it seems to me that you're not very enthusiastic, Antonio inquired. 
Oh, what are you making up? The girl protested. I'm actually very happy. Just let's not rush with the wedding, okay? You're right. We need to furnish the apartment, buy furniture, settle down, all that stuff. Let's do that, and then we can plan the celebration, all right? Antonio was surprised by this arrangement. He thought that usually, women were in a hurry to move things along and set an early wedding date. But here, the bride herself asked to postpone the celebration. Nevertheless, Antonio didn't resist. Yes, dear, as you say. The most important thing is that the wedding will happen sooner or later. I love you very much, Antonio said and hugged Veronica. From her side, she didn't seem very eager. Antonio didn't pay much attention to it. He got Veronica's consent, and that was the most important thing. Ahead, there was a lot of work again. The young man wanted to buy the best furniture and appliances for the apartment, which cost a lot. He started disappearing at work again and had little time for Veronica. Watch out, or you'll lose the girl. And she's quite spirited. Senor Mender once told him in the smoking room, Women love attention, gifts, and outings. Yes, I understand all that, but the wardrobe and refrigerator won't earn money on their own. Everything will come in due time, gifts and outings, but a little later, Antonio explained. It's your business, but time may be missed. Just a friendly piece of advice, Senor Mender said, patting his colleague on the shoulder and leaving the smoking room. Antonio didn't attach much importance to his old friend's words because he knew very well that his friend had pursued Veronica in the past and had been rejected by her. However, over time, the groom began to notice that both he and his fiancée were staying late at work. Vivi, aren't you taking care of yourself? Why are you overworking? He asked with concern. Well, you yourself said that we need to furnish the apartment. So, I decided to get involved in the process, the girl replied. No need, my dear, I can handle it all myself, the guy said and gently kissed his beloved on her marble shoulder. However, Veronica continued to stay late. Later, business trips on weekends were added to this. The girl consciously started avoiding unnecessary meetings with her future husband. Soon, Antonio noticed that his passion had acquired a new, latest model phone. Where did it come from? He asked. I bought it. I earn my own money. I have the right to, Veronica replied boldly. Of course, you do. I just thought you wanted to help me with buying household appliances, Antonio calmly said. Veronica didn't respond to that. She just left the room in silence. Following the phone came a golden bracelet and more and more bottles of perfume on the dressing table in the bedroom. Antonio didn't mind that the girl was indulging herself, but suspicions began to creep into his heart. He voiced them to his friend Daniel. Bro, excuse me for being blunt, but she's cheating on you, the guy said, listening to his friend. Where did you get that? Antonio was surprised and scared at the same time. Judge for yourself. She allegedly stays late at work and goes on business trips. Is it all for your apartment? But in reality, she hasn't bought anything for the apartment yet, but she has acquired a lot of expensive stuff. With all due respect to her profession, she doesn't get paid well enough to afford all this. Besides, you said she reluctantly accepted your marriage proposal. That's really strange, Daniel explained. So what should I do now? How can I check this? Antonio asked, bewildered. It's easy dig into her phone, read her messages. Well, you can also track where she goes on weekends, Daniel calmly explained. That's kind of low. I'm used to our relationship being based on trust, Antonio protested. It's up to you, bro, it's up to you, wise friend just shrugged his shoulders. Daniel's words stuck in Antonio's head. In the end, he decided to follow his friend's advice and snooped in Veronica's phone while she was in the shower. The guy didn't know the password, but it wasn't too difficult to guess. First, Antonio entered a combination of his own name and his own date of birth. Wrong. Then he entered the nickname of Veronica's beloved cat, Camilla, and the date of the girl's birth. Bingo. 
The phone unlocked. Antonio gained access to all of his beloved secrets, if she had any. He hoped that his fiancée had no secrets from him, but he was wrong. With trembling hands, he entered the messenger and came across a conversation with a contact labeled as LL. The photo showed a presentable man in a business suit with expensive watches on his wrist. The correspondence was passionate. Veronica exchanged intimate photos and intimate messages with this man. They discussed dates and meeting places. In addition, LL was interested in whether the girl liked this or that gift, a phone, a bracelet, and much more. Antonio scrolled through the conversation to the very beginning and realized that their affair had started when Veronica switched to a new job. Here, and the whole truth has been revealed, and I, a naive fool, believed that we had love, and she was truly trying for our common future, the guy said to himself. He set aside his fiancée's phone, sat on the bed, and grabbed his head. Sweetie, something happened? Veronica asked him, coming out of the shower. But she immediately noticed her phone next to Antonio and understood everything. How dare you do this? Why did you go through my phone? The girl screamed. How dare you cheat on me and lie shamelessly? Antonio firmly replied. I don't owe you anything, got it? I never promised you anything, never swore to be faithful, so I can consider myself a free girl. Veronica continued to defend herself. Antonio fell to his knees in front of his beloved, almost crying. Oh, Veronica, how could you? I love you and do everything for us, you know that. I know everything, the girl replied harshly. He tries, and my life passes by, do you understand? First, he spent years earning for the apartment, now for wardrobes and refrigerators. You're always hanging out at work, and I'm still waiting, waiting and youth and beauty, they are not eternal. Right now, I'm still young and good-looking, but the first wrinkles are just around the corner, and who will need me then? Who will? I will. I already made you a proposal, Antonio asked, puzzled. He made a proposal. It's the kind of proposal you can easily refuse. Especially when there are people on the horizon who can offer something more, and not in the distant future, Veronica said cruelly but honestly. I understand everything. You don't have to continue, Antonio said, getting up from his knees. I'll spend the night at Dan's tonight. You live here for as long as you need to, but we'll be parting soon. It's all over between us. No need to go to Dan's. This is your apartment. Spend the night here. Besides, I have somewhere to go. I'll just pack my things now, the girl replied indifferently and went to the hallway to get her suitcase. Antonio heard Veronica's chattering on the phone. My beloved Sandro, can you come for me? Yes, right now. No, not for the evening, forever. I'm happy too, baby. Kisses, waiting. Bye for now. At that moment, Antonio's heart sank, and it shattered into hundreds of tiny pieces in the pit of his stomach. His legs instantly grew heavy, and he slid down the bedroom wall, not knowing how to go on living. But for Veronica, everything was crystal clear. Well, I've packed everything I could. Tomorrow or the day after, I'll send a car for the larger items. I have a couple of those here, the would-be bride said to him, standing at the apartment's doorstep. Well, it's time to say goodbye. Thank you. After all, there was more good than bad in our relationship, right? Good luck. I'm sure everything will work out for you. Oh, by the way, I forgot the ring. Here you go. Maybe it will fit your future bride, and it'll come in handy. Antonio silently took the ring and closed the door behind Veronica without saying a word. Then he went to the window and saw his love getting into a large white car, and a big man in an expensive coat helped her put her things in the trunk. Antonio opened the window and, without thinking, threw the engagement ring out onto the street. What other one? I won't have any other. All women are heartless. The man yelled after the departing car. A girl walking her dog heard him and immediately turned towards the house. Antonio closed the window and wept bitterly, like a child who had just broken his favorite toy. 
In childhood, when his parents could comfort him by promising to buy something even better, but now, the guy couldn't even entertain the thought that there might be girls better than Veronica. What's more, he loved his fiancé so much that he couldn't even imagine the existence of other girls. He didn't even glance in their direction. In despair, Antonio called his friend Dan and asked him to come over. Dan knew that his friend would need some boost today, so he brought several bottles of strong alcohol. Antonio drank, cried, reminisced about Veronica, and kept saying that there was no one else like her. Tough case, buddy. But believe me, you'll find your happiness again, Dan consoled his friend. The next day, Antonio woke up with a heavy head, but with one very clear thought, he needed to forget about his personal life and focus on work it wouldn't deceive or betray him. So, the guy did just that. He had worked hard before, but after his beloved left, he began literally spending nights in the office. Seeing this, the management promoted the diligent employee even earlier than planned. Antonio's salary increased, and he easily furnished his apartment. He even had some extra money. Your Veronica was a fool. She couldn't wait a little longer, Dan said during a housewarming party. Don't talk about her like that, Antonio reprimanded him. He still loved his ex-girlfriend and wouldn't let others speak ill of her, despite the pain she had caused him. All right, buddy, as you say. But let me try to find you a Veronica replacement, okay? I've got this Vicky in mind, you'll be thrilled. Third size bust, a wasp waist, hips like Shakira's. She's not just a girl, she's a fire. Dan tried to cheer up his friend. And Antonio decided to give it a try. He met with Vicky, then with Paulina, Natalia, Romana. Following Dan's recommendations, there was a whole series of girls, slim, well-endowed, and sometimes even longer-legged than Veronica. But, it seemed, the problem wasn't in the length of their legs, but in something else. Something that couldn't be explained in words or understood. After all, love defies transcription. You're a strange one, buddy, honestly. Dan marveled, whose longest relationship had lasted no more than four months. After spending a few months with a series of casual relationships, Antonio realized that this kind of lifestyle was not suitable for him at all and decided to end his flings. He threw himself into work once again and soon received another promotion. Antonio was indeed highly talented and fortunately, the management recognized and rewarded it. A couple of years later, Antonio bought a new apartment, a duplex with panoramic windows. He purchased appliances and furniture immediately. There was no need to save for it. He led an interesting life, traveling extensively, attending theater and cinema premieres, and going to music festivals. Everything was great, except for his personal life. He no longer pined for Veronica, knowing that she had married and had a daughter. But he still couldn't find a replacement for her. Kate, the housekeeper, helped him manage the household, so he didn't experience any domestic difficulties. However, no one could provide him with emotional warmth and care. No one except beloved woman. Adding to his troubles, his perpetual womanizer friend Dan unexpectedly announced his upcoming marriage. This came as a complete surprise to Antonio. Bro, how can this be? Eternal bachelor, eternal partygoer, and now marriage. That's always been your worst nightmare, hasn't it? Antonio teased his friend. Yeah, bro, life sometimes throws curveballs. I remember a few years ago you were telling me about feelings for Veronica and how love is not just about hot nights. I laughed at you back then, thought I had a strange friend. After all, Vicky is much prettier than Veronica, but recently I found myself falling in love, so to speak, Dan confessed, looking embarrassed. Recently? When exactly? Antonio asked with interest. About six months ago, blushing, Dan replied. Six months? And you kept it a secret from me until now? Can I still call you a friend after this, bro? Antonio asked with a smile. Of course, bro. I just didn't believe it was serious until the last moment. Probably because I'd never experienced anything like this before, Dan replied seriously. Like what? 
Antonio inquired. When someone doesn't leave your mind, even in your dreams. When you kiss her and feel like you're flying higher than ever before. When you look at her and can't get enough. You close your eyes and see her, and you simply don't notice other women. No, at first, I didn't believe it myself and tried to jevil other girls on the side. Well, it's the usual story for me, you know, but it didn't bring me any pleasure. None at all. It turns out I'm perfectly content with just one girl, and she can give me everything I need. Everything I used to get from many others, but not quite, Dan explained. Antonio recognized the feeling he was describing. I understand, buddy, and congratulations. Well, will you introduce me to your chosen one before the wedding? Antonio asked. Of course, no problem, Dan replied. Antonio expected to meet a girl in the style of Vicky, a model with the corresponding attributes. But the bride of the womanizer turned out to be an average girl named Nuria. She was not very tall, slightly plump, with freckles and curls peeking out from her ponytail. She shyly blushed when meeting Antonio and clung to Dan. He embraced her affectionately, as if trying to protect her. It turned out that the young couple had met in the subway. Nuria accidentally dropped the book she was reading, and Dan picked it up for her. A casual conversation ensued, and Dan himself didn't understand how he ended up asking for her phone number. She, an intellectual, was not the type he used to go for. Nuria herself didn't understand how she gave her number to a guy who resembled the one she, an intellectual, used to disdain. Both came to their first date with the firm belief that it would also be their last. But life is so unpredictable that half a year later, Dan proposed to Nuria, and she agreed without hesitation. The wedding was scheduled to take place in just two months, not extravagant or pompous, but intimate and cozy. Nuria doesn't like showiness and fuss, Dan explained. But you love that stuff, don't you? Antonio was surprised. Most importantly, I love Nuria, Dan replied, blushed, and changed the subject. That evening, after getting home and seeing off Kate, who, as usual, had done a brilliant job of cleaning, Antonio sat down at his computer to choose a wedding gift for the newlyweds. In the end, he settled on a trendy air humidifier, the same thing he once wanted to buy with Veronica. But, apparently, it wasn't meant to be. So, let others enjoy it. Having placed the order, Antonio turned off his computer and went to sleep. Over the past few years, he had become so engrossed in his work that he had ceased to suffer from the absence of a personal life. But the fact that his best friend was getting married had prompted him to revisit thoughts of marriage. Antonio had always dreamed of having a large family and had done everything in his power to ensure that his loved ones never experienced any hardships. But where? Where could he find the right woman? Only if he relied on the whims of fate and an unexpected encounter somewhere, like what happened to Dan. But the problem was that Antonio hadn't used public transportation in a long time. So, it's time to take a ride on a bus, he jokingly encouraged himself, closed his eyes, and fell asleep. During the night, he unexpectedly dreamt of a girl shooting a bow and arrow. He couldn't see her face as she stood with her back to him. He called out to her, and she began to turn around, but that's when Antonio woke up. He remembered that he had called the stranger by a name in the dream, but upon waking up, he couldn't recall it. The programmer descended from the second floor to the kitchen and drank some water. Unexpectedly, this dream had gripped him and thrown him off balance. His heart was pounding unusually fast. This stranger. It wasn't the first time he had dreamt of girls, honestly. But for some reason, it was specifically the guest from today's dream who wouldn't allow him to sleep peacefully. Antonio approached the panoramic window and uttered, And we walk the same streets, and we will definitely meet. These words acted on him like a mantra, and the man quickly fell asleep. He woke up in the morning with complete certainty that he would soon meet the love of his life, and his feelings for Veronica would seem like child's play. However, for the rest of the week, he was pursued only by work meetings and discussions. He had to sift through a pile of emails, solve numerous tasks, and screen out dozens of proposals. Nevertheless, one of them piqued his curiosity. 
A local university was inviting representatives from the company to join the jury of the Miss Technical Faculty competition. I hope there will be many bikinis and such, Antonio's colleague Vidal joked during a meeting. Well, what are you saying? Of course not, protested Alicia, who worked in the neighboring department. I myself studied at this university and participated in such a competition. It's more like a talent show with an intellectual component. The girls demonstrate their professional skills and talents in other areas. It's all very decent. And so, there won't be any tango panties? The doll continued joking. Imagine, replied Alicia. Well, what's the point in going there then? The doll teased. Enough of that. There is a point. It's really great that girls are given a chance to express themselves and showcase their full potential, insisted Alicia. We just need to think about who will represent our company on the jury. Antonio, maybe it should be you? You'll be surprised, but I'm not against it, replied Antonio. Wow. Really surprising. Usually, one can't drag you out of the office, and now you're not resisting. Well, I have no objections. Besides, if there won't be any bikini-clad girls, said Vidal. On the cherished day, he arrived at the university he had graduated from 10 years ago, but he didn't feel any nostalgia. As he walked through the familiar hallways, his heart beat steadily until somewhere in the distance, a girl with a bow on her back flashed by. Exactly the same as the one he had seen in his dream. Antonio lost his ability to speak, and then he wanted to call out to the stranger but couldn't recall her name. The girl, in the meantime, disappeared around the corner. Maybe I just imagined it. Antonio said aloud. What what? The cleaner with a bucket of water asked him. Oh, nothing special. Can you remind me where the auditorium is? The woman with a mop pointed him in the right direction. And you should wipe your feet. All sorts of people walk here, stomping around, and then I have to clean it up. The cleaner grumbled discontentedly. Sorry, Antonio replied, feeling embarrassed. You could become a millionaire or even a billionaire, completely change your life. But there were things that nothing could change. For example, the displeased grumbling of the cleaner. This moment amused Antonio and distracted him from thoughts of the beautiful stranger. He reached the auditorium and took a seat at a table where other jury members, representatives of various technical companies, were already seated. The hall was crowded and noisy. Students were getting ready to support their friends. Many of them held signs with their names. Antonio was a bit nervous. Vidal was right. Amidst his work routine, he had truly forgotten about entertainment events. However, today he was not going to have fun but to judge the competition. And to do it fairly and impartially. Finally, the noise in the hall subsided and the host appeared on stage. I'm pleased to announce that the Miss Technical Faculty competition is now open. Today, Ten charming contestants will vie for the title. Each of them will present themselves in a unique way, showcasing their talent, the host announced into the microphone. One by one, the girls began to appear on stage. One of them was dressed as belly dancer, presumably planning to perform an eastern dance. Another came out in a kimono, likely to demonstrate techniques from martial arts. The third carried an easel in her hands, on which she planned to paint a picture. Each contestant was unique and earned Antonio's respect, but when the last contestant was announced, his heart raced. And finally, let's welcome contestant number 10, Dahlia Cabello. A second-year master's student, an outstanding student who is passionate about archery. The host declared, and the girl from Antonio's dream emerged from behind the curtains. A petite, athletic brunette with sharp, eagle-like eyes and a bow on her back. So, this is what your face looks like, and your name is Dahlia. Yes, I remembered, Antonio mumbled. What? Sorry. Another jury member asked. Nothing, I just admire the contestants, Antonio replied. I understand, his colleague said and started applauding. The contestants began to take turns showcasing their talents, but neither dancing, singing, nor painting captivated Antonio. 
He was waiting for the coveted archer to appear on stage. Finally, the girl came out to the audience. Her movements were as swift as those of the goddess of hunting, Diana. A target was set up on the other side of the hall. Daria bowed to the audience and, for a moment, locked eyes with Antonio. That moment was enough for his heart to skip a beat before her first shot. Finally, Daria began to shoot all of her arrows hit the bullseye. Daria is demonstrating incredible accuracy. Bravo. Simply brilliant. The loud-voiced host commented on her performance. For the first competition, the archer received 10 points. Only one other contestant, a stinger performing Edith Piaf's song, received the same score. The others fell behind. Ahead of the girls was an intellectual competition where they had to answer questions related to their field of study. These questions were posed by professors, and Daria excelled, catapulting herself into the lead. It turned out she had a loud, confident voice with a rolling R that literally pressed Antonio into his seat and made his heart skip a beat. The final competition was a philosophical one, and the jury members prepared the questions for it. Some asked about their future careers, while others inquired about the ideal family. Now, we have our final contestant approaching Dahlia Cabello. And her question will be asked by... Let me think. Let it be Antonio Shivari, the CEO of the Avian Company. Daria, get ready. Antonio, we're listening to you, the host instructed. Antonio's throat instantly went dry. He had already asked a question to another contestant, and everything went smoothly. But now, he was about to address the girl from his dream. However, he composed himself, took a sip of water, moistened his throat, and formulated the question. Daria, tell us, what is your ultimate dream in life? Daria decisively took the microphone from the host and confidently replied, I want our world to become a better place, and I know what needs to be done for that. Our profession is important and fascinating. We change the world and move it forward. Innovations are what we're all about. Innovations are what I will be doing. I have plenty of ideas and concepts in my head that can fundamentally improve the quality of life. I believe that together with like-minded people, we will achieve our goals, reach new heights, and make the world talk about us. Thank you. The archer delivered without hesitation. Thank you, Antonio quietly thanked her. Wow. It seems like that was a declaration of victory. The excited host exclaimed. But let's not rush things. The jury needs to score the final competition and announce the results. In the meantime, let's have some music. However, the words of the hosts turned out to be prophetic. Daria indeed became the winner of the competition with a significant lead over the other contestants. All jury members took to the stage for the award ceremony. Antonio's company was a key partner of the competition, so he was tasked with presenting the main prize to the winner, a certificate worth $1,000. Antonio's hands continued to tremble and his temples pulsed. Pull yourself together. You are not a 15-year-old boy. After all, he tried to reassure himself. At the moment of presenting the certificate, he locked eyes with Daria, and it felt like a bolt of lightning struck him. When he shook the girl's hand, he felt a real spark, so intense that he awkwardly pulled away. A smile appeared on the stern face of the archer. This happens, it's physics, she explained. The handshake was firm. This girl is like she's made of steel, as if reading Antonio's thoughts, the teacher standing behind him whispered in his ear. Oh, Senor San Pedro, it's great to see you. Antonio recognized his former academic advisor. I'm also very glad to see you, Antonio. I'm glad that you came to us in this capacity. I always knew you had a bright future with your abilities. And as for Dahlia, I'm sure she'll go far too. By the way, she's also your compatriot and living in the dorm. Yet she manages to study exclusively with top grades. And you, I see, are without a ring. Haven't you married yet? Well, then, take a closer look at Daria. I can see that she has already made quite an impression on you. She's an outstanding young woman, one in a million. 
Besides, she's not a little girl anymore. After all, she's finishing her master's degree. And what a beauty. But her beauty is not doll-like, it's regal. Well, why am I telling you all this? You're a smart guy. You can see and understand everything for yourself. Antonio truly didn't need any additional information about Daria. He had been captivated by her long before their encounter during that unexpected dream revelation. However, Antonio had no idea how to approach the unapproachable archer and win her favor. Years of solitude had made him completely out of touch, and the occasional casual connections he used to establish were never this challenging. But this was something entirely different. Fortunately, fate intervened, and Daria approached him in the university corridor. Good evening, Antonio. Unfortunately, I don't know your surname, the student greeted the man. It's Shivari, but you can call me Antonio. Good evening, Daria. Congratulations once again on your victory, Antonio managed to keep his composure, still not believing his luck. Yes, thank you. You've already congratulated me. Right now, I'd like to talk about something else. You're the CEO of Avion, correct? Daria asked with the utmost seriousness. It was evident that there was no flirting on her part whatsoever. Yes, that's absolutely correct. Antonio maintained a professional tone. Excellent. I would like to inquire if it's possible to intern at your company. And if so, what needs to be done? What documents should I bring? Just so you know, I have a certificate of English proficiency and diplomas for my performance in all country student competitions with prizes. I also have a comprehensive portfolio, which is extensive and detailed, Daria inquired persistently. At that moment, Senor San Pedro passed by in the corridor. Darling, you should remove the bow. You look a bit too warrior-like. The elderly professor remarked. Oh, yes. Of course. Thank you, Senor San Pedro. The girl stammered, blushed, and smiled. It was a charmingly girlish reaction, especially in contrast to her serious tone during the conversation just a minute ago. Antonio was irrevocably in love. He physically felt his heart, which had plummeted to the bottom and shattered into pieces after Veronica left many years ago, slowly mending and rising back up to where it was supposed to be, hugging a person with its warmth. Antonio involuntarily smiled, then fell silent, but quickly regained his composure and returned to the conversation. So, what were you asking? Is an internship possible? Of course, it is. We always welcome talented young professionals within our walls. I'll leave you my contact information. Be sure to get in touch with me. Leave your portfolio and phone number. Dahlia was practically jumping with excitement, becoming even more adorable and charming. Thank you, Senor Shivari. I won't disappoint you. See you. The girl said cheerfully and ran to her friends, who were ready to congratulate her on her victory in the competition. Until we meet again, Antonio whispered with a smile as he watched her go. Then, leisurely and with a slight dance in his step, he headed toward the exit. You've been walking all over the place, and now I have to clean up after you. Spit on you, grumbled the irritated janitor as he passed. But Antonio didn't even notice her. He came home, elated like a teenager, and on the way, he even bought flowers for Kate. Why is that? Antonio, the housekeeper asked in surprise. Just because, the apartment owner replied cheerfully. I hope she's a good girl. Instantly understanding everything, Kate inquired. She's wonderful, Antonio answered without hesitation and added that he met her at the university competition. The next day, he frequently checked his work email, hoping to see a message from the coveted address. Dahlia didn't keep him waiting for long. By lunchtime, he received an email from her with her portfolio, certificates, a recommendation letter from Senor San Pedro, and the most coveted information for Antonio, her phone number. Antonio moistened his throat and, waiting until everyone left the office, dialed her number. Hello, Daria? This is Antonio Shivari from Avion. I received your resume and reviewed it, he said, trying to contain his excitement. 
Good day, Senor Shivari. I'm glad to hear that, the student replied, not holding back her excitement. And what is your verdict? Your resume is impressive. Despite your young age, you've already achieved a lot. Undoubtedly, you have much more ahead of you. So, we are willing to accept you for an internship. Initially, the pay will be minimal, but if you prove yourself well, it will increase over time, and you'll become a full-time employee, Antonio explained. Thank you. I would have been willing to intern with you even for free. It's such an honor and valuable experience. Daria spoke enthusiastically. Oh no, work should be paid for, the man added. Thank you again, Senor Shivari. A smile was evident in Daria's voice over the phone. You're welcome. You can start tomorrow. And let's just stick with calling me Antonio, all right? The programmer clarified. Sure, okay, we have a deal, Antonio, Daria replied, sounding a bit shy. Antonio hung up the phone and smiled. At that moment, Vidal entered the office. Oh, who has those cat-like eyes glowing? He jokingly asked. Did the visit to the student competition pay off, even though they weren't in bikinis? Don't talk nonsense, Vidal. The embarrassed boss scolded him. Better go prepare the workstation in the open space. Our intern will be coming tomorrow. Intern or internet? He teased, winking. Internet, but it doesn't matter. That's it. I need to get back to work. Antonio interrupted the conversation. Inside, he was jubilant. In the evening, he went to a barber shop, tidied himself up, bought a new shirt and new perfume, the kind that he thought would suit Daria. Don't worry so much, Antonio, Kate comforted him in the evening. If she's as you described, she won't fall for such things. You can charm her with your intellect and strong character, which you have in sufficient quantity, believe me. So just be yourself, and everything will work out. Antonio was reassured by these words, and he peacefully fell asleep. The next day, he noticed Daria already in front of the office building. He barely restrained himself from calling out to her and suggesting that they go inside together. But then he reminded himself that they weren't really acquainted yet. Besides, the hierarchy of their relationship required him to avoid such familiarity. As a result, he parked his car and watched the girl for a few minutes. She was wearing a business suit, but in soft shades that added a touch of femininity to her image. Neat accessories, a bracelet, and a swallow-shaped brooch emphasized her femininity even more. Antonio noticed Daria hesitating at the entrance, adjusting her clothing. She was clearly nervous. That's when he decided to discard all formalities. He got out of the car and approached Daria, feigning surprise. Daria, is that you? I'm glad to see you. How did you get here? Allow me to escort you to the right office. It's on our way. Oh, Senor Shivari, I'm so glad to see you too. The girl replied, both embarrassed and joyful. I got here just fine, without any traffic jams. Fortunately, my dormitory is nearby. Is it the one on 8th Street by any chance? Antonio inquired. Yes, that's the one. How did you know? The intern asked, surprised. I lived there myself once upon a time. We're compatriots, Antonio explained. No way. Daria blushed. You see, we already have something in common, the man said, and realizing that his last remark was unnecessary, he continued, well, we're almost there. This is our open space, and this is Vidal. He'll show you to your workspace. Make yourself comfortable, and closer to lunchtime I'll come to check on how you're doing. Antonio entered his office, but couldn't focus on his work at all. Through the blinds, he kept a constant watch on Daria. He could see her diligently maintaining good posture, neatly arranging her things on the desk, and attentively listening to colleagues as they briefed her on the work. The CEO didn't notice when Vidal entered his office. Well, not a bad choice, said the colleague. It's quite your style. She might not be a knockout beauty, but she's quite cute. And she seems smart. She suits you, I approve. 
Come on, Vidal, cut it out already. Antonio scolded his friend. What? It's you who's been closely watching our intern through the blinds, Vidal pointed out with a smile and left the boss's office. As promised, Antonio entered the open space closer to lunchtime and immediately realized that Daria had adapted quite well and had even established rapport with Alicia. The employee was explaining the basics of the job to the intern and introducing her to the nuances of corporate etiquette. The conversation was businesslike but relaxed. I see everything is going smoothly. Antonio asked. Yes, everything is great. We're getting along just fine. Alicia replied cheerfully. By the way, I also won the Miss Faculty competition back in the day. Did I not mention that? No, you didn't. That's so cool. Daria genuinely congratulated her. The intern started her job diligently. She was punctual, followed the rules, attentively listened to her mentors, and handled all her tasks well. Everyone was satisfied, and Antonio was pleased with that. What he didn't know was how to approach the seemingly unapproachable girl. Active Vidal came to the rescue. Colleagues, today is Friday. Isn't it a good reason for us to gather after work and hang out at a bar or something? What do you think? He asked towards the end of the workday. A joyful buzz swept through the office. Everyone loved the idea. Excellent. Then I'll reserve a few tables for 12 people, Vidal concluded. For 13, I'm joining you guys, Antonio corrected him. Senor Shivari, I won't recognize you. You usually work until the end and never go to bars with us. What's gotten into you? Alicia genuinely wondered. I decided to restore my work-life balance. After all, I'm human too, right? The boss explained with a hint of offense. You're not just human, you're a champ. Vidal joked, to the delight of their colleagues. All right, it's settled. I'll reserve for 13 people. So, tonight after work, we're heading to the Tipsy Frog. In general, Antonio didn't really enjoy these noisy gatherings with colleagues. He preferred more intimate meetings. In the bar, everyone went together with Daria, which meant he couldn't miss the opportunity to get closer to her. The venue was noisy, crowded, and dimly lit. Perfect, Antonio thought, realizing that his colleagues wouldn't notice his efforts to get Daria's attention. At first, she seemed reserved and shy, but over time, she became more relaxed, laughed at Vital's jokes along with everyone else, and even shared some of her own. Antonio observed the girl with interest, and with each passing minute, she became more beautiful in his eyes. This was despite the fact that he had intentionally ordered a non-alcoholic beer to stay sober and not ruin this important moment. Later in the evening, when most of the employees had indulged quite a bit and had formed groups based on their interests, Antonio noticed that Dario was chatting with Vidal. However, Vidal intercepted Antonio's gaze, knowingly winked at him, pretended that he had to make an urgent phone call, and left. Antonio took his place. Daria, how do you like working here? Not knowing where to start, the man asked. He was completely sober, but the presence of his beloved girl intoxicated him. It's good, I like it, Senor Shivari. Oh, Antonio. Yes, I like it, she replied, stumbling a little. I'm glad, Antonio said. And tell me a bit about yourself. What are your interests, and what kind of family do you come from? I have only mom, Daria began her story. She works as a doctor in a small town. My dad left us when I was five, and I barely remember him. We lived quite modestly, but proudly. My mom always worked a lot and taught me the value of hard work. So, I always knew that I would achieve everything in life through my own efforts and my own intelligence. In high school, I got into programming, and it turned out that I was good at it. So, I aced my exams and got into a university in the capital. Now, thanks to you, I'm starting to build my career. I want to earn well and buy a bigger apartment for my mom since she's living in a small one. That's the plan. Antonio nodded understandingly. They had even more in common than he had initially thought. 
he had similar concerns about his mother and had already bought her a larger apartment. However, he didn't bring this up with Daria. Not now, maybe later. What are your hobbies? Antonio continued. Archery. I got interested in it as a child, and I still practice it to this day. Many people think it's not a lady's hobby, but I don't see it that way, Daria explained. I don't see it that way either. It's just an unusual and very interesting hobby, Antonio smiled. Exactly. What about you? What are your hobbies, if you don't mind me asking? Daria blushed a bit, feeling shy. Of course, you can ask. In our company, we follow a democratic management style. And overall, I go to the gym, to theaters, art exhibitions, and I try to travel whenever I can, Antonio began listing his interests. Your life seems very fulfilling and exciting. Daria admired. Yes, Antonio replied with a hint of sadness, not realizing that he had just described his life as fulfilling yet lacking the presence of a loved one. The conversation between the intern and the CEO continued to flow smoothly. They reminisced about their hometown in the Urals, university professors, debated work-related topics, and discussed what breed of dog is the most ideal. Each of them unwittingly realized that they had a lot in common. In the end, Antonio gathered the courage to voice a surprising proposal. You know, my best friend is getting married in a week, and I don't really want to attend the wedding alone. I don't have a girlfriend or a wife, so how do you feel about accompanying me? I promise I won't make any advances. Everything will be in good taste, I swear. Daria was taken aback and couldn't respond at first. If it's not acceptable to you, you don't have to agree. I understand, Antonio said, mentally scolding himself for suggesting such a thing. No, no, I'm flattered. I'd be happy to accompany you. It would be an honor for me, Daria replied with a smile. Great, that's wonderful. We'll discuss all the details in our messages next week, okay? For now, let's go back to our colleagues. They've been giving us sideways glances already, Antonio said and moved closer to Vidal. So, lovebirds, have you chatted enough? Vidal asked. Yes, Antonio replied without hesitation. The evening had definitely gone well for him. The following week, preparations for Daniel and Nuria's wedding began. The couple announced that there would be a dress code for the ceremony. Guests were to wear shades of wine. Oh, I'm afraid I don't have any clothes in those colors, and I don't have the money to buy something right now. It's still two weeks until payday, Daria explained during their lunch break. That's not a problem at all. Right after work today, we'll go to the store and pick out an outfit in the required color for you, Antonio stated. But is that acceptable? We're not in such a close relationship, Dario was surprised. Yes, yes, you're right, Antonio hurried to reassure her. But the whole idea of the wedding was mine, I initiated it. So, let me take care of everything. I'll pay for your dress. That's it. I'm not asking for anything else. No, thanks, Daria was firm. Since I agreed to go, I'll definitely attend, and as for the dress, I'll borrow the money from you and pay you back immediately after I receive my salary, okay? Okay, Antonio reluctantly agreed, realizing that there was no other way to convince Daria. That same evening, they went to the store. Daria tried on a variety of outfits, and she looked stunning in all of them. Antonio watched her with admiration and was ready to buy her everything, but Daria settled on a wine-colored pantsuit. I'll give you back everything in two weeks, she declared at the cashier's. He nodded silently, hoping that in two weeks, they would already be a full-fledged couple, and Daria would forget about returning this pantsuit because Antonio would give her more gifts. And it happened just like that. After the store, Antonio drove Daria back to the dormitory. At first, Daria felt a bit shy about it, but then she relaxed and got used to it. They joked a lot and talked very easily, as if they had known each other for many years. Well, we've arrived. I have to go now, Daria said. But Antonio took her hand, pulled her closer, and kissed her. The girl didn't resist. So, 
It turns out we're going to my friend's wedding as a couple after all? Antonio asked with a smile after the kiss. If you're suggesting that we date, and it doesn't contradict the rules of the company where we work, then yes, it seems so, Daria replied, feeling a bit embarrassed. It doesn't contradict the rules, Antonio confidently stated. The main thing is not to abuse our positions. But you're so talented and hardworking that no one will even think that you're my protege. Whatever you say, Daria replied and kissed him again. Well, I have to go now. Meanwhile, the couple decided to be discreet and not publicize their relationship at work. Sooner or later, everyone would find out, so why rush things? The weekend was approaching, and Daniel and Nuria's wedding was coming up. On Saturday morning, Antonio picked up Daria. She looked absolutely stunning in her wine-colored outfit with her hair down. You look amazing. Antonio exclaimed with admiration and kissed her hand. Daria blushed and didn't say anything in response. She was studying on a predominantly male faculty, so she didn't really suffer from a lack of attention from the opposite sex. However, by the age of 24, she hadn't had any serious relationships. She had dated a fellow student named Nico for a few months, and she knew he was head over heels in love with her. But from her side, she could only offer sympathy. It wasn't going anywhere, so their relationship was short-lived. Nevertheless, Nico still pined for his former love. But with Antonio, everything was different. Daria realized it right away, from the unusual warmth that covered her body, to the way she looked at her chosen one and the way he looked at her. How they eagerly anticipated each other's meetings. It was definitely love, the kind she had only read about in books and seen in movies before. Daria and Antonio entered the banquet hall, holding hands. Daniel was amazed to see his friend with a girl. Wow, bro, what do I see? You and this beautiful stranger? How should I interpret this? The groom joyfully greeted his friend. But you sent me an invitation of plus one format. So, I came with a company. I hope you don't mind. Antonio replied. Of course not. What are you talking about? I just didn't know you had someone. I thought you were still pining for Veronica, Daniel whispered so that Nuria and Daria couldn't hear. That's all in the past. I've moved on. Now I have a new chapter in my life. Hopefully, a happier one. Let me introduce you. This is Daria, my girlfriend. Antonio introduced his chosen one to the newlyweds. Nice to meet you. Nuria chirped happily, adjusting her veil. I can already tell that we'll become good friends. Sweetie, if you think so, I have no doubt about my friend's choice, Daniel said and added, pointing to his new wife, she has excellent intuition. But still, why didn't you tell us about your new love earlier? Because our relationship is just beginning. Don't rush, there will be plenty of time, Antonio replied. Well, well. You'll outdo me and propose to Daria before I do to Nuria. Daniel patted his friend on the shoulder playfully. Anything can happen, Antonio replied with a smile. The wedding turned out to be joyful and heartfelt, with only a few close guests. But this didn't affect the overall mood. Daria danced energetically with Antonio and willingly participated in the games. Her chosen one was overjoyed. I haven't seen you like this in a long time. Daniel said during a break. Hold on to this girl. She makes you happy. Antonio knew this himself. His relationship with Dario was developing rapidly, and they were kindred spirits. That dream about the archer had turned out to be prophetic. A man who had kept women out of his heart for a long time had completely opened up to his new chosen one. Here I am, with all the joys and passions. I'm not hiding anything from you, ready to share everything, to speak honestly about everything. Antonio told Daria in detail about his romance with Veronica and her betrayal. She wanted a beautiful, comfortable life, and back then, I couldn't give her that. But she should have just waited, you know. Much of what I have now, property, cars, expensive things, I did to prove to her and myself that I could achieve a lot. Even more than other men, you understand, he told Daria, tears welling up in his eyes. 
I understand, my dear. But for now, calm down. You're at home, I'm right here, and we're safe. All the betrayals are behind us. Everything will be fine, I promise you, Daria said lovingly, stroking Antonio's head. It felt just like when he was a child, and, as a little boy, he cried and complained about some childish troubles. And her motherly touch, her simple but most important words, really calmed him down, just as Daria's words were soothing all the wounds now. At work, it quickly became apparent that there was something going on between the boss and the intern. They didn't give themselves away with words or gestures, but the atmosphere between the two lovebirds was palpable, as well as the glances they exchanged. However, their feelings were so genuine that even the sarcastic Vidal chose to refrain from making jokes. Moreover, Daria was soon transferred from being an intern to an official employee without any help from Antonio. She was thrilled about this, and Antonio shared her excitement. He wanted to get even closer to her and suggested that she move in with him, but unexpectedly, Daria declined. I would like to stay in the dormitory for now, she stated without a doubt. I'm sure we have many happy years ahead of us, but trust me, for both you and me, it's better this way. Antonio was taken aback by this, but he decided not to attach too much importance to it. His mind was occupied with thoughts of the wedding. Daniel was right. He was ready to propose to his new girlfriend even faster than his friend, just three months after they had met. And that exciting moment came. Antonio bought a huge bouquet of roses and suggested that Daria take a ride on the Ferris wheel with him. There, he gave her the flowers and a ring that was completely different from the one he had once given to Veronica. Daria burst into tears of joy and threw herself into her fiancé's arms. Of course, I agree, my love. I'm so happy. She said with tears in her eyes. And I am too. Let's get married as soon as possible. Antonio said. Of course, but only after I finish university, okay? It's only a few more months, she replied, hugging her groom tightly. Okay, Antonio answered obediently, but not very joyfully. They also decided to delay the wedding preparations. Daria explained that it was essential for her to focus on writing and defending her diploma. Antonio knew how important her education was to her and accepted these conditions. They started seeing each other a little less frequently as Daria spent more time at the university and in the dormitory. The situation began to look suspiciously similar to what had happened with Veronica. How can you even compare this situation? Daria protested. I promised you that I would never betray you, and I know how to keep my word. Antonio silently nodded but decided to seek advice from Daniel. You know, I'm really bothered by her constant absence. And the fact that she asked to postpone the wedding, it's all just so suspicious and worrisome to me. What do you think? Am I paranoid, or do I have a reason to be concerned? Antonio asked. Bro, something about this whole situation doesn't sit right with me either. When I proposed to Nuria, she immediately agreed and started googling available dates at the registry office. She didn't want to delay anything. Daria, of course, seems completely different from Veronica at first glance. She's serious and business-oriented. But who knows what these women are like on the inside? As they say, the devil is in the details, Daniel shared his thoughts. What should I do? Antonio asked. Stick to the classics, check her messages, his friend advised. Antonio understood that his friend was right. However, it was extremely unpleasant to go through Daria's phone without her knowledge, especially considering how such an action had ended with Veronica. But he felt like he had no choice. This time, Antonio knew Daria's phone password. She didn't even try to hide it. It was a formula related to kinetic energy of the body, reflecting Daria's scientific interests. When Daria came to visit him and started preparing dinner, Antonio discreetly remained in the bedroom and accessed her phone. With trembling hands, he checked all her conversations in one messenger app. Everything seemed fine. Just some casual chatting with her friends, work-related chats, study-related messages from classmates and professors. Antonio checked another messenger app, the same result. 
a third one, also clean. He sighed with relief, but the unease still lingered. He then met with Daniel again. Everything is clear in her phone, but I still can't shake this feeling of unease. You know, I wasn't the jealous type before, but after what happened with Veronica, this feeling is like a dragon inside me that won't let go. Daria is studying in a predominantly male department, and she lives with many guys in the dorm. I can't help but worry, Antonio shared his concerns. Yeah, they are all a bunch of losers. What can they offer her compared to your income? Only a fool would trade someone like you for guys like them. And Daria clearly isn't a fool, Daniel said. Maybe you're right, but I still can't help feeling insanely jealous, and I can't control it, Antonio lamented. In that case, I see only one solution, install a hidden camera in her dorm room and see what's really going on. If she's playing some double game, it will be revealed immediately, and you won't waste any more time, Daniel advised. Yes, perhaps you're right. That's what I'll do, Antonio concluded. He felt uncomfortable about doubting his beloved's behavior like this. But as they say, once bitten, twice shy. Installing a camera in a room wasn't too difficult. At one point, Antonio asked to visit Daria at her dorm, and though she was surprised, she agreed. She had a roommate who was at a party somewhere else at the time. Left alone in her room, Antonio subtly placed the equipment. For extra security, he brought two cameras instead of one. He hung them up in different corners of the room. The gadgets were incredibly small, making them almost impossible to notice. When Daria returned to the room with a small pot of soup she had prepared, Antonio was already waiting for her, sitting on the bed. The game was challenging, but the die was cast. He had to find out the truth, no matter what. All that was left was to wait. Daniel advised Antonio to review the recordings not immediately, but after some time for a more comprehensive picture. Time passed painfully slowly, and Antonio continued to pretend that everything in their relationship was proceeding as usual. However, Daria sensed something was amiss. Darling, are you okay? You've become somewhat distracted and distant lately, she asked her beloved. No, no, dear. Everything is fine, it's just your imagination, Antonio replied, well aware that he would be reviewing the surveillance camera footage later that evening. The crucial moment had arrived. To feel more comfortable, Antonio invited Daniel. Go ahead, I'm ready for anything, Antonio said with a trembling voice. Whatever you say, bro, his friend replied and pressed the start button. The recording began in fast forward mode. There was nothing remarkable recorded. There was Dahlia's chatting with her roommate, doing some cleaning, having lunch, and working at her desk. Boring, bro. It seems like a false alarm, Daniel said, yawning. Wait a minute, Antonio replied, noticing a group of guys entering the frame. The friends leaned in closer to the screen. Well, this is getting interesting, Daniel summarized. The men were prepared for anything but not for the sight of Dahlia, along with her classmates, digging through piles of books, sitting in front of a laptop, drawing something, and engaging in heated debates. Daniel scrolled through the video. It turned out that these gatherings were taking place in Dahlia's room regularly and had been going on for a while. Well, I don't even know what to say, bro. It doesn't seem like there's a reason for jealousy. It appears that your fiancé is hosting some kind of intellectual symposiums. Good luck figuring out the situation. Daniel gave his friend some guidance and hurried to his young wife. Antonio remained in his chair, not knowing what to do. The cameras indeed didn't capture any signs of infidelity, but these intellectual gatherings in the dormitory left many questions unanswered. He didn't dare to ask his beloved directly about what was going on, as it might reveal the presence of the cameras. But his curiosity was eating at him. As it often happens, the answer came on its own. In the evening, right after finishing work, Dahlia entered Antonio's office. May I have a few minutes, Senor Shivari? She asked with a cold tone. Yes, of course. Close the door and come in. We've agreed long ago that we can use first names even at work. 
We're not strangers to each other, after all, Antonio said. Really? I'm not so sure about that anymore, Dahlia continued, slamming the door shut behind her. What do you mean? Antonio asked in alarm. Here's what. Dahlia threw two tiny cameras onto Antonio's desk. And don't even think about lying that you're not involved in this. How can you explain this? I'll explain everything now, my dear. A flustered Antonio said and proceeded to tell her about his anxieties, worries, and concerns. He also explained why he had installed the cameras. Dahlia listened attentively with her arms crossed. The fact that your ex-girlfriend cheated on you doesn't give you the right to distrust your new girlfriend and spy on her. It's offensive and humiliating, Dahlia scolded him. I understand, my dear. I'm truly ashamed of how this turned out. Antonio pleaded. Did you find what you were looking for? You probably hope to see orgies in my room, right? Dahlia continued to vent her frustration. No, no, what are you saying? I'd die if I saw something like that. I trust you, but... I don't know what came over me, but still... What's happening in your room? Some kind of scientific symposiums? Antonio cautiously inquired. You, with all your technical qualifications, are acting like a fool. Yes, you can call our meeting symposiums in a way. Remember during the Miss Faculty contest when I said I wanted to change the world with innovations? I will definitely do it with like-minded people. So, it wasn't just empty words. My classmates and I are indeed working on cutting-edge software with no analogs. That's why I didn't want to move in with you or rush into the wedding. I knew you wouldn't approve of this endeavor. You'd want to confine me in a gilded cage, provide everything, and leave me with a purely formal job. But I am truly talented, and I haven't started a family yet. I want to realize myself and my profession. We live in the same dorm with my classmates, and it's convenient for us to gather and work together. So, have I satisfied your curiosity? Dahlia yelled in anger. Yes, my dear. I'm sorry for not asking directly and for installing those foolish cameras. I never doubted your talent. I never intended to confine you in a gilded cage. Moreover, if your developments are so important to you, Antonio tried to justify himself. Spare me your grand words. I no longer believe you. Don't call me. Goodbye, Dahlia dryly said and left, slamming the door. Antonio called Daniel. He needed someone to talk to. Well, bro, what can I say? Fate hasn't brought me many encounters with such complicated women. You chose her, so you'll have to deal with it yourself. I think you should just wait for a while. She'll probably cool down and you'll reconcile, Daniel said. Antonio once again decided to follow his friend's advice. He decided to leave Dahlia alone for some time and give her space to breathe and maneuver. Additionally, he was about to go on a business trip to another city. It was tough for him to be away from his beloved, but he firmly resolved to endure the pause. When he returned a week later, he couldn't find Dahlia at her workplace. Is she sick? He asked Vidal with concern. No, she quit, his colleague replied in surprise. I thought you knew. You two are still together, right? Or not anymore? Yes, we're still together, of course. We're definitely still together, a nervous Antonio stammered and quickly grabbed his coat. I'm heading to an important meeting. I don't know when I'll be back. Cover for me. As you wish, boss, Vidal replied, bewildered, and added as the CEO rushed out of the office, beware of a silent dog and still water, right? Isn't that what they say? Go participate in beauty pageants with students after all this. Just go for the regular ones with bikinis. It might be easier with them. Ignoring his colleague's sage advice, Antonio jumped into his car and hit the gas. He knew where to find Dahlia. At the entrance to the university, the same janitor greeted him and muttered something about dirty shoes again. But this time, Antonio completely ignored her. 
He was in a hurry to get to his former academic advisor's office where his beloved was defending her diploma. Antonio boldly opened the door to the familiar lecture hall. Please leave, senor. You are disrupting the educational process. Dahlia said in a frosty tone. Darling, why are you so strict? Senor Shivari is no stranger to our field. He has every right to be here. Come in, my friend. Dahlia and I can't seem to settle a scientific dispute. So, you can arbitrate for us, Senor San Pedro said, gesturing for his former student to enter. Antonio timidly crossed the threshold of the office, and Dahlia didn't even look in his direction. So, what's the essence of your dispute? The man asked the professor. The thing is, dear Senor Shivari, our dispute goes beyond the realms of physics or mathematics. It's more related to philosophy, ethics, and morality. Daria insists that someone who has once made a mistake isn't entitled to forgiveness, even from someone who loves them wholeheartedly. I, on the other hand, judge from the perspective of lived years and dare to say that everyone deserves a second chance. Forgiveness is the greatest gift, thanks to which humanity still exists. What do you think about this? Senor San Pedro asked with a sly smile. Daria is undoubtedly talented. I'm sure she used to be right in hundreds of arguments before. But today, Professor, I would like to take your side. Perfection can only exist in gases, and even then, only in physics textbooks, Antonio replied, gaining confidence. Dahlia finally looked up and, for the first time, met her fiancé's gaze. It was evident that her heart was beginning to thaw. Well, you're both unique individuals from different generations. It's been a pleasure talking to you, but I have other students waiting for me. I'll go in search of new gems in science, and I'll leave you to settle your philosophical dispute once and for all, the professor said and silently left the room. Antonio silently approached his beloved from behind and embraced her. He was prepared for anything, for Dahlia to push him away, break free, start arguing, shouting, leave, and slam the door. But she stood still and didn't push him away. In complete silence, they stood there for a couple of minutes. Afterward, the girl turned to her fiancé, took his hand, and said, I already told you once that I love you and won't betray you. Why didn't you believe me? I don't know, my dear. I don't know. I promise I won't doubt your feelings or your faithfulness again. Let's forget everything. You can continue with your scientific developments as much as you want, and you can go back to work, all right? Antonio asked hopefully. I will continue with my research. It's essential to me. Regarding work, I've already submitted my resume to another company, and they are willing to offer me a high-ranking position. They are also interested in my innovations. If you're okay with living with a career-driven woman who's passionate about her profession, I'm ready to move in with you today. If not, let's part ways amicably and go our separate paths. The final decision is yours, Dahlia said decisively. Of course, I accept your conditions, just as I accept you, bold, intelligent, and independent. I promise not to encroach on your freedom and to support you in everything. And if you build a more dazzling career than mine in the near future, I'll only be delighted. So, what do you say? Shall we go home? Antonio said with a smile and extended his hand to Dahlia. The girl offered her hand in return, and they walked toward the exit, encountering Senor San Pedro in the corridor. That's excellent, he said with a wise smile, watching the young couple. Antonio nodded gratefully. But I have one more condition, Dahlia unexpectedly declared once they were outside. What's that? Antonio asked, slightly anxious. No dress codes with colors at the wedding, okay? It's some silly tradition. Oh, that's really no problem at all. Let the guests come in whatever they want, even if they're naked. We won't impose any restrictions. Antonio cheerfully replied. Dahlia laughed heartily in response, and they drove home, happy, beautiful, and deeply in love. If you're enjoying it as well, leave a like and subscribe to the channel.